Welcome to Tip TV Finance, where I'm joined by Alejandro Zambrano, who's Chief Market Analyst at Amana Capital. How are you today, Alejandro? Very good. I believe yeah. celebrations are in order. Oh, thanks. With your new job and everything. <laughs> That's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything we need to know about Amana Capital? Amana Capital is actually the second biggest retail broker in the Middle East. And uh, they have offices, of course, in that region, like Saudi Arabia, Dubai. We also have offices in Cyprus and London and Lebanon. Right, well, I was, I said to you off, uh, off air, I was very yeah. keen to visit the Cyprus office. office yeah. It's very nice there this time of year. Yeah. Uh, but let's look at the financial markets, a serious uh, situation. Uh, well, th there's the geography of, of your company. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so, uh, obviously, very, very big in Arabic. And we run a website called sukalmal.com, which is like the, uh, say, daily effects of the Middle East, really. Uh, these guys over there are really, really popular. And uh, obviously, we're trying to recreate and do something nice uh, in English and anyone that really speaks English. Um, so it's an interesting or company. Even me. Yeah, why not? All right. <laughs> the, other, the other point, actually, what I wanted to say is actually just, I mean, this is, um, let's say, the Middle East. Uh, yeah. Is a, you know, let's say it's an emerging market for FX, or it's, yeah. a, it's an emerging market in, in many areas. Is there more enthusiasm than there than there is in in, in you know London? Because you go around talking about FX in London, people want to throw rotten fruit at you. <laughs> is, there, is there you know, but just because they've seen it, they they've seen it all. They're cynical. Yeah. They don't take advice from anyone, even George Soros, like who is here? We don't care. Exactly. Is, it, is it a different market there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it is, as you say, emerging. We're seeing in the UK is a very, very saturated market. People tried. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, people, you know, have dabbled in forex a lot. So it's it's uh, totally different. Um, yeah. Right. And any particular? I mean, what are the crosses that people trade there? What's the main one? They actually trade the normal stuff. You know, you they will be trading the euro dollar. Obviously, things linked to crude, uh, but literally the majors, S and P, Dow major currencies and so on. So I found that they do that across the world. It's not just in the Middle East. It would be the same if you, you know, look at countries like Malaysia, uh, China, but also South America, really. We all trade the same markets. Even the great British pound. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. well, uh, we've got the, uh, to, to, uh, we're starting off with a different subject here. Um, what is this chart telling us? Uh, this is the Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar. And, uh, you know, one of the key things for both of these economies is one, iron ore prices for Australia, and then you have uh, dairy prices or milk prices for New Zealand. So iron ore is the biggest export from Australia, and uh, dairy prices, so dairy products are the biggest exports from uh, New Zealand. So uh, from pretty much January to February, we could see, uh, on the, if we look at the chart, uh, that the ratio between iron ore prices and milk prices were rising. So iron ore prices were gaining faster than milk prices. And that caused the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar to move up higher. And since March, really, we've seen iron ore prices come down quite a bit. Same time, milk prices bottomed out. And, and that has caused the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar to move down lower. And if you look at current pricing, you can see that there's a nice little divergence between where the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar is and uh, this ratio, which suggests really that uh, the downtrend for Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar is not over yet. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, chart. Here's another key driver, and uh, again, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar, uh, and then we have what we call the swap spread, which is uh, the two-year swap spread differential between uh, Australia and New Zealand. Here you can see that the, the line that is you know dropped off heavily you know, since March, that is the swap spread, and it declined strongly. Be primarily because Australian interest rates declined quite a bit. And again, it's suggesting that the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar should be trading closer to maybe 106, uh, even as low as 105, really. Um, so these two key drivers that we just looked at are, if anything, telling us we should look to sell the Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. Okay. Yeah, here are the technicals. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we're in a little downturn here since March, uh, with 10850 uh, really being a key level. I know price is pretty much at these levels uh, as we speak, because I did this chart yesterday evening. And uh, keep an eye on 10850. I mean, technically, if it just proves to be a false push to the upside, and if 10850 holds a support, a resistance, sorry, then I do think that we can go down and maybe test uh, last week's low. Uh, in the period of one to two weeks.
So even if it, even if it keeps going up with this 10850, you should hold it for a while. Yeah, I mean, we are there right now, right? So uh, if we would actually establish ourselves and say get a daily close and it does look like it's going to head up higher, then obviously we wouldn't look to sell. But maybe by the end of the day, if we have a reversal or early tomorrow morning, if we have a reversal, we can use that to sell. Uh, for example, uh, overnight, we have the Australian Consumer Price uh, Index report uh, being published. And say that if Australian consumer price index numbers are worse off than expected, uh, then we're probably going to have a nice reversal candle by tomorrow. And, and that could be a good sign, really, to, to look to get short. Okay, let's go on to uh, the most exciting cross of the moment. Yeah. Uh, which way? Which way? Uh, I was actually looking at similar things like swap spreads and so, so on for the euro dollar. And it, it does suggest to me that this is in no way in a rush to rally substantially higher. In fact, the currency is quite overbought here. And, and I think we're going to probably move back down to that trend line again. So ideally, we look to buy on a dip, really, uh, as the trend has been since December 2016. Uh, but I think slowly up higher, uh, and, then, and then maybe in a few months from now, uh, lower. What do you think of our, our friend uh, Trump's, our mutual friend Trump's uh, <laughs> uh, corporation tax uh, pro um, news that's uh, uh, yeah. due to come out tomorrow? Uh, obviously, if you go ahead and, and lower corporate tax, and that would obviously be great uh, for uh, the U.S. Now, a lot of the big companies, you know, they, they have offshore companies anyway, so they're not necessarily paying too much taxes. Um, so the corporate tax is great in general for the small firms, but if you're trading currencies, what you want to look for is uh, tax reliefs if you bring money from your offshore entities back to the U.S., uh, they did this, what was it, 2004, 2005 or something like that, don't remember exactly, and at that point we got a nice little boost to the dollars. Uh, all these big firms uh, paid less uh, tax on income from abroad to bring that back to the U.S. Right, so th this chart is not factoring in Trump um, bringing, um, getting through this 15% uh, corporation. No, I know, not at all. I think uh, in general uh, it's... It's not at all factoring, not even the Fed, 100%. Um, the Fed, you know, right now, I looked at yesterday, so the market is pressing in about one and a half rate hike uh, for this year, uh, over the next 12 months. But as far as I remember, I think they were looking to raise interest rates three more times this year. Well, they always say that. They always say that, yeah. But uh, say, for example, if the expectations drop to about one rate hike in the next uh, few weeks, then that would definitely be time to look for a reversal in the dollar. The reason for that is because, I mean, it's very likely at least two times. And now, what could be a factor that would drive down expectations of a rate hike? I think it could be Friday's GDP number. Why? Because we have that battle between hard data, soft data, and you know, all the ISM numbers and, you know, sort higher, consumer confidence, all telling us we should have a very strong GDP growth. But then if you look at the Atlanta Fed GDP model, is suggesting a very, very low growth of half a percent. The market itself is predicting an outcome of 1.3 percent, and then the Fed GDP, half a percent. So if the GDP indeed fails to meet expectations, I would anticipate that people are going to be more, uh, assume that the Fed is going to be more dovish, and they're going to be right in the short term. But in the long run, uh, economic growth should bounce back in the U.S., and suddenly, you know, they're going to look to raise interest rates again. And what would be your trade of the day? My trade of the day, uh, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar, that will be it. Uh, the euro dollar technically is in that nice uptrend that we talked about, so it's not really ready to, uh, to trade that yet. Uh, okay, well, Alejandro Zambrano, Chief Market Analyst at Amana Capital, thanks for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me.